Welcome again to the Bearded Weirdo Show, and today I would like to do the uh, Trick or Treat Studios uh, Frankenstein mask, and this is the Boris Karloff edition. Uh, Trick or Treat Studios actually did make two. Uh, they made uh, the Glenn Strange from the uh, House of Frankenstein, and uh, which I'll do at a later date, but right now I want to focus on the man himself, Boris Karloff, as you can see from my shirt here. Um, huge fan of uh, you know the uh, Frankenstein's monster. And uh, so I thought maybe, uh, again, haven't seen too many reviews on this one. And uh, Boris Karloff, um, you know, I think was probably the best well-known portrayal for the, uh, the Frankenstein's monster. And um, probably the most favored, I guess, of all the, uh, you know, the, the Frankenstein monsters that were out there and everything. So, but uh, let's go ahead and get down to the nitty gritty and I'll go ahead and show you the mask and everything. Um, this is the um, Trick or Treat Studios, Boris Karloff here. And uh, you guys can kind of see a little bit there on the sides. And like I said, this is, uh, you know, like I said, you see the Trick or Treat Studios logo there. And uh, which I thought was really neat that they actually managed to get uh, licensing for some of the uh, Universal Studios monsters and stuff. Um, <clears throat> like I said, you can kind of see the, um, you know, some of the, some of the uh, nice little effects they have there. They added the, the scar there. Um, as far as the paint scheme is concerned, um, like I said, the camera kind of makes it look more like traditional um, Frankenstein, uh, or excuse me, Frankenstein's monster, and uh, kind of gives it a sort of, uh, you know, kind of a grayish, you know, overtone. But the mask itself, uh, at least in my opinion, is more of like a sort of a lime green in color. Um, I guess kind of what you picture a dead guy looking like, or at least a dead guy that's reanimated, um, or, you know, parts of dead guys. However you want to say it. Uh, so there's the uh, the bolts, the infamous bolts in the neck there. Uh, let's see if we get this other one out of the way here. You can kind of see the other bolt there, uh, which I thought was pretty cool attention to detail there because, like I said, this one's more of a post, um, and then this one is you know got the uh, the actual end to it there. Um, like I said, it's a nice touch. Um, the uh, the eyes. I mean, <clears throat> in comparison to some of the other uh, masks I've seen. Um, from Trick or Treat Studios, the eyes are probably one of the more um, noted uh, pieces or parts of the mask. Uh, that uh, especially like with um, the uh, the Twisties mask. Uh, when I actually went as a Twisty um, uh, cosplay one year, and a lot of people were like, "Oh my God, are those your real eyes?" And I'm like, "No, this is just you know just a mask." So, uh, you know, it, it obviously gets a lot of, you know, garners a lot of attention and things, but, um, like I said, the eyes on this one really, I don't know, I guess they're okay. Um, again, I've not really, I've only, you know, tinkered and played around with this one a few times, but I do like the dark circles though, under the eyes and things that so you guys can kind of see there. Um, you can kind of see the uh, black around the nose and the lips and everything. Again, you know, this is uh Frankenstein. He's supposed to be, uh, you know, uh, assembled from, uh, dead corpses. So. Uh, the cuts that you can see there, those, like I said, those are a little bright, um, at least for my taste. Um, I think they could have kind of dulled it down a little bit, you know, made it more kind of a ruddy looking, like, uh, you know, cut that's healing kind of thing. Uh, you can see the bolts there on the head. And this actually has th the traditional, um, more flat head Frankenstein look there, as you can kind of see. Uh, it's definitely, um, it's, you know, more of the more accurate, more screen accurate masks. Um, that I've seen uh, the hair I've been trying to like keep it down because it's kind of all over the place um, But I love the fact they actually used real hair on this uh, Well, not real hair, but you know, they it's you know hair um, And like some of the masks that I have the Frankenstein masks They just make everything is all one piece. So it's you know, it doesn't actually have any kind of like movable hair or anything so um, I thought it was a nice touch for this one and uh like I said, you know, it's it's a it's a pretty awesome mask, and um, you know, I have to commend Trick or Treat Studios for um, taking the initiative and actually, you know, making a, a decent one. Especially fans like myself that are big creature fans, um, you know, it's nice to actually have a decent, you know, Karloff mask. Uh, the other one I have uh, is actually a licensed Universal Studios mask, and um, it's. Not too bad as far as like, uh, it, I mean, you guys have probably seen pictures. If you, you know, anybody's friends with me has probably seen it on Instagram and, uh, you know, goof around on Facebook with uh, that one a few times. And um, that's why I, why I do my uh, leather jacket, rockabilly style Frank there. <clears throat> so, um, you know, like I said, this mask here is, uh, 
it's got a, it's, it's got the breathing apparatus there. You can kind of see around the nose and stuff there. Again, the mouth is, you know, it's shut. So if you, you know, try to talk out of it, you know, trying to get air out of it or anything, it won't happen. Um, so you're much restricted to breathing through your nose on this one. Um, now I will say that the, uh, the mask is uh, a little more comfortable to wear in terms of, you know, if you're going to be wearing it for long periods of time. Um, now I did try the, um, Lon Chaney Wolfman mask on and, uh, almost had a panic attack because that thing is really, really tight around your face. Um, this one's not so much and the, uh, the Glenn Strange there is not, uh, not as bad either. So, um, I apologize. There's Wolfman hair on that. So let me get that out of the way there. Um, but, uh, like I said, you know, all in all, like I said, the lighting effects on this one actually do make this look more traditional, um, you know, like the actual Boris Karloff. So, um, which is pretty neat. Um, you know, like I said, but the actual mask, if you, if you decide to take a look at it online, it has more of a putrid green, um, color to it. I guess what most people would probably picture Frankenstein, if there was a colorized version, uh, kind of more of what he would look like. So, uh, like I said, it's got the split at the back there. So, you know, for easy, uh, easy access, you know, you can slip this thing on and off with, um, it does kind of look, it looks kind of narrow, <clears throat> but once you actually get it sit down and get it kind of fluffed out and everything, it doesn't look quite as, you know, um, you know, kind of one dimensional, I guess, um, you know, kind of push the back of it up there and that's kind of how it's supposed to look. Um, so well, like I said, you know, I mean, it's, it's really, it's really a nice mask. I mean, I, I, you know, wasn't mad at it. Um, like I said, I've gotten several masks over the years uh, that boast to be looking like Frankenstein's monster. Um, as far as like the traditional Universal, nah, not so much. I've only got maybe one or two that actually look pretty close to uh, Mr. Karloff. And uh, but now I have some several variations of the Frankenstein's monster, and, uh, and those are badass in their own respective rights. So, you know, uh, it's really, like I said, again, with, with masks these days, it's kind of hit or miss. Um, I mean, you might actually get, um, a really cool mask and, you know, it may, you know, may actually be better than what you get when you, or what you see online. Uh, now some I've gotten, um, it looks really great online and you get it and you're like, what the hell is this? It's nothing, you know, it doesn't look anything like I, you know, had hoped for. Um, so, and I think a lot of it depends on what pulls you get, because sometimes when you get some of the original first pulls, um, once they get all the perfections and things out of it, and, um, you know, it, it actually looks closer to the actor or, you know, the, the particular creature in this case, um, you know, it, it makes a big difference. Um, now when you get the later pulls, like, um, I have a Myers mask, uh, that I had gotten from Trick or Treat Studios. And the, it's one of the, uh, we're supposed to be original, uh, Myers masks and it fits perfect. Like I love it. It's probably one of my favorite masks, um, to wear when I do, uh, Michael Myers cosplay. Um, and I have the blood tears version, which is the exact same mask with literally with the blood drawn down and that mask fits horribly. Like I, I can't even wear it. And like one side is like sunken in, it, it looks like. It was just a kind of a quick and dirty pull kind of thing when they when they you know or whoever had done it. Um, so you know, I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's kind of hit or miss. But uh, you know, this one's like I said, it's getting it's got detail. I don't know how much my camera can actually you know show you, but uh, there's you know some of the wrinkles and things there. Uh, there's around the chin and stuff there. There's some kind of like pot marks and things. Um, you know, I guess maybe uh, old Frank may have had some sort of acne problem at one point in time. But, uh, you know, maybe he got cleared up when he died. I don't know. Um, but anyway, like I said, I appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, hope you uh, liked, uh, you know, and maybe it swayed your decision if you decided to buy one. I highly recommend it. And, uh, you know, but again, I'm partial to classic monsters and stuff. A lot of my collection, I've kind of shifted gears and started focusing on more of the Atomic Age classic 50s style uh, stuff from the 40s. Um, and stuff even up from the 60s, um, as far as late 60s and things. So uh, just trying to shift gears a little bit with that. And um, I'm glad that, like I said, companies like Trick or Treat Studios and, uh, you know, are starting to, you know, do more of the classic monsters and things, especially for fans like me. So, uh, but like I said, you know, check it out. It's on their website, uh, trickortreatstudios.com. And uh, like I said, it's one of the uh, last... Um, I want to say the last 2020 uh, catalog uh, features that they had offered. 
and uh, pretty excited about the new one that's coming out as well. So, but uh, that's in due time, and I'll probably do a review on those, I'm sure, at some point. So, again, I hope you guys liked and subscribed, and uh, you know, like I said, let me know what you think in the comments.